Welcome back everybody, this is Eric and Chad here, and we've got another Five Guns video for you today. This is a, uh, in my mind, a pretty important Five Guns video because we're going to talk about five guns that are ideal choices for the first, you know, uh, time gun owner. Okay, we're talking somebody who is not experienced with firearms, who doesn't know what's good and what's not, uh, and believe me, we... we check into our analytics quite a bit on the YouTube channel. We see that a lot of the videos that are being watched on our channel have to do uh, with concepts that many of us would consider uh, being related to more of the new shooters that are out there, okay? Oh, yeah, I mean, like the uh, the Five Guns videos, like for uh, Top Five Guns for the Ladies. I mean, we get a lot of comments, yes. a lot of views on that. I mean, yes. um, guns for children, you know, like your child's first firearms, that right. sort of thing. It's a lot of first firearm kind of thing. We see that there are a lot of people out there seeking out information uh, in regards to these types of subjects. So we're kind of trying to, you know, make this video to, to ho hopefully allow people to learn a little bit about, you know, what different series of firearms, what kind of separates them, what makes them different, and in our opinion, what makes them truly good. Uh, you know, let's say that you're new into the gun world and you've never really owned guns a lot, or you're not sure what to get first. It, let's just say you've been reading all this rhetoric on the, uh, you know, news and everything, and you're worried that they're going to ban semi-automatics, and you want to find some type of a semi-automatic rifle to get into, and you don't want to spend a lot of money, but you know you want to do it. A Ruger 1022, guys, you know, is pretty hard to beat. This is a little uh, laminated stock carbine that I've had for a long time. It's got a stainless barrel. So, uh, it's an 18-inch barrel on that gun. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a great rifle. Mm -hmm. Guys, it's 22 long rifle. It's a rimfire cartridge, for those of you that don't know. And, uh, you know, guys, understand that in this video, we're going to try to kind of keep this information very straightforward and very simple, and, and we're going to try to present this in a way that a lot of people uh, will hopefully be able to understand it if they're a first-time gun owner and they're watching this video. One of the biggest things with the 1022 is that this is kind of America's rimfire rifle. You know, the Marlin Model 60 is another excellent choice. I mean, it's been around for a very long time, and, and there are other semi-automatic rifles out there, but the Ruger 1022 just kind of takes the cake as far as versatility goes. Sure. I mean, I've got a custom 1022 that's that I've got like two grand in. I mean, you can just take it to the limit if you want to. I mean, the sky is really the limit with these rifles, but they are immensely handy. They're very inexpensive. They have 10-shot rotary magazines, which are pretty much unbeatable. I mean, they are just dead nuts reliable. Mm -hmm. And they also have BX-15s and BX-25 magazines, so 15 and 25-shot magazines for those long trips to the range where you just want to get out there and plink. 22 is an excellent platform for anyone to get started on. I mean, the recoil is non-existent. I mean, the, the guns have no recoil whatsoever. Made. Ammunition is generally pretty cheap when you can find yeah, it. You can find it. I mean, you can get the Federal uh, Auto Match, you know, 325 rounds for about $25. And, you know, you can spend an entire day at the range with that one box of ammo, and you can learn trigger control. You can learn how to use your iron sights, which this rifle does have. It's drilled and tapped for a scope base, so you can drop a red dot on there or a small magnified optic of some sort. And they also have models that are takedown, so they're very compact and concealable. They come with their own little package um, or their own little bike backpack to store it in. They also have mo models with threaded barrels, which are very excellent suppressor hosts. I mean, this is kind of a first-time gun buyer's video, but... You know, you got to think about suppressors down the line because most gun most most gun owners eventually will want to get into some of the other aspects of firearms ownership, such as suppressors. Well, the nice thing about a a basic 1022 is it's a very unassuming looking rifle. It is. You know, it looks like just your standard little rifle, and and that's fine. It is. It is a very basic rifle at its heart. You know, these things are extremely customizable. You can do whatever you want to kind of mirror what Chad said. Mm -hmm. But also, the thing I like about it is, let's say this is the only gun you own. Yep. Say this is the only firearm you own, it's a 1022. Stick a 25 shot BX25 in it or a 50 round drum that runs decent, and you got a pack of Angry Hornets you can unleash. Now, granted, <clears throat> it's not like a, a 30 cal or, a, or a, a powerful 556, you know, spanking out of there at close range at a would be assailant. However, Getting shot with the 22 is not going to be pleasant. Well, and also, you know, 22 uh, caliber does offer some other types of ammunition, such as like rat shot. So you can run rat shot, which is basically a small shot shell, out of your 1022 rifle or a, or a handgun. And a lot of guys use the 22 revolvers with rat shot to dispatch snakes or other critters like that if they're kind of out and about on a boat or just milling around in the woods. They'll carry a small 22 with them with rat shot in it. 
just in case they come across like a rattler or something like that or a copperhead that they want to dispatch and get out of their property. Now, uh, I'm getting to our wild card a little early. Okay, this is not something that made it into the actual Five Guns mm -hmm. lineup, but we thought that it was important to show off this little Smith and uh, Smith and Weston MVP Compact. Mm -hmm. It's a 22 caliber pistol. It has an ambidextrous safety uh, rail system. It is, has a threaded barrel, uh, threaded half by 28. From uh, the factory. From the factory, yep. so you can run a suppressor on it. Something like this, a good quality 22 handgun, is a great training tool. If you're a new shooter and, and you, you're not ready to step up to one of the guns we're about to show you, and say you just want to get a lot of trigger time before you go uh, step up to a center fire uh, pistol caliber or something, this is a great way to get in some training. And when you're a new shooter, when you're new to firearms, the more trigger time that you can possibly get in, the better. And what a 22 rifle or pistol will allow you to do is get in the the most amount of trigger time you possibly can for the money. A lot of folks that are getting into guns might be college students who don't have a lot of money to shoot. Or you might be a young single mom who just wants to protect her family and wants to get involved in guns because you're a head of household now and you're, you're looked to as the responsible person. You're looked to as the protector of the family. And believe me, we can relate to that. There, there's a lot of people out there who are put into situations where they are looked to to be the guardians of the household and that role is being handed to a wider variety of people now than that has been in years past. It certainly is. And it, it's very important for people to understand the responsibility of being a, an armed gun owner and, and, and having the training disposition also that allows you to properly utilize those guns should a situation arise. Oh, most certainly. And one of the other like huge benefits of a pistol like this, one of the main reasons, I, I, this is my personal firearm here, and one of the main reasons I bought this was as a suppressor host. Uh, Eric and I are both at the point where we've been getting into NFA a little bit uh, and buying suppressors and such, which are completely legal. We have other videos about that uh, topic out there. But I bought this gun mainly as a suppressor host, but it has a lot of features that are very reminiscent of the larger uh, M&P 9s, 40s, 45s, the, the larger centerfire series firearms sure. that are from Smith & Wesson. This gun has an accessory rail on the front and has the exact same feel. Now, this is a compact model. It is a smaller firearm, but this, like Eric mentioned, is the perfect platform to go out to the range, get trigger time, learn trigger control, learn proper sight picture without burning up a lot of centerfire ammo. Even though 9mm is fairly inexpensive, I mean, 22 is still the cheaper alternative when you can find it in large quantities. But sure. this right here is an indispensable item at the range. And anybody, you, you, uh, say you learn how to use this gun and you start getting into, into firearms a little bit more and get some of the firearms that are on the table, you want to take a newcomer to the range? Well, this is the way to do it. Sure. You know. All right, so let's say that you've gone the 22 route or maybe you're not interested in the 22 route and you want to step up a little bit in power. Now, we're going to give these the list of these guns in the order that I think is the, the order of importance mm -hmm. for the average person to assign a priority to the types of guns that we're, that we're discussing. So I would say some type of a full-size centerfire pistol is a must. Mm -hmm. uh, now, guys, there's a lot of companies out there making handguns. There's never been more competition in the market, which is great for the consumer. Mm -hmm. If you're a consumer looking to buy a handgun, you are in one of the most product-rich environments you will ever be in. Not, to necessarily, get the, you not know, necessarily a handgun, but any gun. I mean, there any are gun. so many firearms manufacturers. But uh, the point I'm making is that there are a lot of handguns out there, guys. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm certainly not trying to say that this is the only one that, that I would buy, but I am a Glock 19 kind of person. I am okay? too. I, mean, I like Glocks, but here is the thing to consider. Now, if, now also, we're, we're discussing this from a standpoint of people that are new gun owners. Mm -hmm. A lot of people tend to not like a gun that, that does not have a manual safety. Now, guys, look, it is a training disposition that you have to get around. Many modern firearms, namely pistols that we're discussing here, do not have a physical manual safety. And that's striker one, fired. Mainly. Uh, mainly striker fired, but that's one issue that I run into at Moss when I'm there mm -hmm. and people are shopping for guns. One of the, especially a new time gun buyer, one of the first things they ask oh, is, it does it have a safety? Yep. And if it doesn't have a safety, they don't want anything to do with it. But one thing I want to stress in this video is remember that safety is in between your ears. Mm -hmm. you, you Do not put your finger anywhere near the trigger until you're ready to shoot. Carry the gun in a proper holster, mm -hmm. and you'll never have a problem. Yep. Okay. But 
a lot of people, it's fear of the unknown. And if you're watching this video and say that you're, you're looking to this video to glean some information as a potential gun buyer or someone who's a new gun buyer, you need to understand that there are a lot of varying amounts of training disposition out there to different people. And for us who are experienced gun handlers, the Glock is a great choice because it is a very utilitarian handgun. It's known for its extreme reliability. Um, you know, it, it's, it's very durable. Uh, they're very hard to break, hard to mess up. Aftermarket parts are completely available. Of course, OEM parts are available. So, guys, if you're not a gun person, you're watching this and you're going, well, why should I buy a Glock? Guys, the Glock is a Honda Civic of guns. Okay? That's the bottom line. It's dependable. It'll get you where you need to go. It'll take care of you. It'll get you there safely. And they'll last forever if you take care of them. That's where Glocks tend to kind of fall into the world of guns. Now, um, looking at the M&P, like we talked about the 22. Say you want to step up to an M&P uh, 9 full-size handgun or a com compact handgun, uh, and you want to get one with a manual safety. Well, Smith & Wesson offers the M&P uh, in a manual safety. Now, and in a lot of ways, the M&P is a, in my opinion, a, a physically superior gun to the Glock. It's certainly more ergonomic. A lot of folks, right. like when we're at Moss and they're they're comparing the Glock to the Smith & Wesson, nine times out of ten, they will pick the Smith & Wesson over the Glock purely on ergonomics alone. Just right. that grip profile of the M&P is very, very hard to beat. I mean, you know, the Glocks, they have the Gen 4s that are out with the adjustable grip panels and such, but personally... I will only buy a Gen 3 Glock. Right. You know, just because they are kind of tried and true and they are out there in huge numbers. But, I, you know, the, the whole safety thing is, is kind of a non, non-issue non for me. Right. And um, it may be a non-issue for you, too, if you're watching this. These guns actually do feature multiple safeties, but they are built into the mechanism of the firearm. Right. The main one being a trigger block. So you have a, a small... Um, lever here in the middle of the trigger or the trigger itself and it will not allow the trigger to be actuated unless you actually have your finger in the trigger guard actuating the trigger itself. Now there are a drop safeties and a few other odds and ends in here I won't get into detail on but this gun can be dropped off the Empire State Building and it will not fire. You know, right. This is the biggest thing. When you draw the gun you can have a hot round in the chamber. Keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to fire. That is one of the 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 most important things to learn as a new gun owner is just simple. Keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to fire and you won't have any issues. There won't be any negligent discharges. So I mean, that we're clear on this, one thing I want to mention about this particular Glock 19, it does have a Nibixed slide, which is not a, a factory available feature. This is an aftermarket type thing. And it also has Trijicon uh, Deep U HD sights mm -hmm. uh, with the yellow front. That, to me, is an essential upgrade for a Glock because yep. you're not going to really have problems with corrosion. However, you, you definitely want to consider that. I like all my stuff Nibix because well, I've got that real acidic sweat and I'll I, rest things. I will say that I, I own a Glock 43, which is a single stack 9, and I purchased that mainly for like a summer carry piece when I'm just wearing a t-shirt or whatever and I want a real low-profile firearm. But I will say that the finish on that gun has been starting to rust. Right. I have never had a single issue out of my Glock, uh, Gen, my Gen 3 Glocks, like my 19s. I own several 19s. 19s and the finish on those is a um, it's a fin uh, not a finicide what do they call it uh, melanite no not no melanite's what's on the Smith and Wesson we're talking about tenifer tenifer yeah Glock yeah. has a tenifer coating which is very very durable and I have never had a single problem out of that but you know I will say the Gen fours yeah they're kind of so so all right so let's say Moving that you've on. you've gone with the 22 you decided all right I've got my 22 now I've got my full size Glock. Um, here, here's my, my reasoning. All right, I'm going to explain the reason I'm going in this, in this order. Mm -hmm. Because if you can master a handgun, you can master anything. Mm -hmm. If you can shoot a handgun well, you can definitely shoot a rifle Hand, well. Now, there are the things order. that go kind of hand-in-hand -hand with marksmanship that are going to be slightly different with shooting a rifle, obviously, because it is a different platform in terms of the, of the way the gun is set up. But... If you understand the, the points, the finer points of sight picture and maintaining your sight picture, following through with trigger squeeze, guys, if you can shoot a handgun well, you can shoot anything. Mm -hmm. All right, and that's my, my goal there. So let's say you've, you've gotten behind your handgun, you're really good with a handgun, you feel confident, you want to defend your home a little bit better, or you want to have something that can reach out a little bit further, guys, a shotgun is a must. <laughs> uh, that, that is, you know, one of the most common um, sort of 
goals that people have when they're getting into firearms for the first time and what I see on a regular basis, you know, people will go, yeah, you know, I've got a little hunting rifle my grandpa left me. I've got a 22. i I've got a few handguns. Mm. They always say, I want a shotgun. Well, a they shotgun, always go to a shotgun. A, a shotgun is somewhat ubiquitous with home defense, just overall. I mean, most of the folks that would ever come into malls, if they were looking for a home defense gun, they would want a shotgun. I mean, a 12-gauge shotgun is very, very hard to beat as far as utilitarian purposes go. Very I mean, versatile. Very, very versatile. I mean, you can run birdshot, buckshot, slugs, less than lethal, saboed rounds uh, for hunting. I mean, the the, yeah. the, the the amount of ammunition you can run through a shotgun is endless. But this is a Marine Magnum from Remington, and this is basically an 870, and there are several models of 870s. You have the Express models starting at just over $300, which are very affordable and very high quality for what they are. You've got Mossbergs out there, like the Mossberg 500 series, which are also a very good shotgun. Really, any 12-gauge pump is going to be something that every first-time gun owner should have in their personal collection right and it's just a utilitarian gun and there's just sure there, there's a lot to say about it and it's just it's simple I well mean, shotguns are simple. you know like here in the south you know we're in georgia and down here the humidity is just crazy all the time mm -hmm. especially during the summer so a all-weather finish like the nickel finish that's on this uh, uh, marine magnum is a must in my opinion and one thing i'll say about shotguns i'm probably going to catch some flack here from some of the more experienced people however i can say that you know being from the position where i've been a consumer before believe me i understand that money is hard to come by sometimes and we want the absolute best that we can get for our money but when it comes to a pump shotgun in my humble opinion um, I will say that I would avoid some of the, the more entry-level stuff, and I would save your money and get something really good for the money. Because here's the thing. Okay, so you're going to go buy a, a Maverick 88 or something, which is a very entry-level shotgun, and they certainly are functional guns. If you're just going to load it and put it in the closet and never use it, mm -hmm. fine. But if it's something that you consider yourself to be, hey, I I've coined myself a new gun owner, and I'm going to own some awesome guns, and I'm going to build a collection, mm -hmm. Go on and buy a good pump shotgun. I mean, invest in a 590A1 from Mossberg that has the marine finish or get a marine magnum or get yourself a, you know, a nice 590A1 with ghost ring sights and metal trigger because the thing is, you know, the, the price points between the guns are not quite as varied as you would think. I mean, you know, I can spend 379 on a Mossberg 500 or I can spend 499 and get pretty much like close to the top of the line that they make. I well, mean, not only that, but like a, a military spec model. You know, yeah, yeah, you get the thicker I mean, barrel. I mean, we're not going to get into all those details. We have other videos that, that compare mm -hmm. the, 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 the Remington 870 to the Mossberg. Mm -hmm. But the reason that I'm bringing that up is that pump shotguns are kind of one of those things where when you're looking at different shotguns that are out there, there's really only about two or three companies from a major league standpoint mm -hmm. that actually, it would be kind of like going to the car lot and wanting to look at trucks, and there only being like two or three companies that make trucks. It kind of <laughs> narrows it down, but try to look at it like that. I well, mean, yes, there's a lot of knockoffs out there. There's a lot of, you know, the Chinese stuff that's being brought in. You got Turkish, the Stevens yeah. and the Turkish stuff and, and all that. I mean, that's all good and fine and everything. I'm certainly not saying that those aren't acceptable. Like, if you bought a Stevens Model 320, that's an excellent little mm -hmm. pump shotgun. But I would strongly encourage someone to invest the extra money in a quality pump shotgun. Yep. So let's say you've, you've gone the 22 route, you've gone the 9mm pistol or whatever caliber you decide on, handgun route, you've gone the shotgun route. Most people naturally from that point are going to want to go with some type of auto-loading rifle such as an AR or an AK or something like that. Well, I mean, an AR is one of those things that is extremely hard to beat, especially in today's market. I mean, the market is flooded with AR-15s right now. I mean, you can barely give them away. And there's so much competition out there on the entry level end. You can go out and buy a quality AR for $600. I mean, used to, you could build one yourself for about that much, but now it's, it's coming to the point where, hmm, I don't know if I really want to build one because I can buy a basic rifle, which is all that anybody really needs to start with. You can start with a uh, Smith & Wesson uh, M&P 15. And it's going to have all the features that a regular M4 would, except it's semi-automatic. But Correct. the platform is there, and it can be upgraded over time, just like we talked about with the 1022. There are so many companies making aftermarket product for the 1022, it's ridiculous. It's almost 
just mind numbing. It, how it's much sort of. Um, it's also kind of solidified that gun as a major player for an auto loading twenty two because well, there's so many mom and pop places. I mean, there's there's cottage industries oh, yeah. that have sprung just from the existence of this rifle the, and that one. The same thing with the AR fifteen. The AR fifteen is America's rifle. This is the rifle that is ubiquitous with American gun ownership. I mean, it really is. Now, this one here is slightly modified. We have, this is kind of a, a built rifle. I mean, it's built on an Anderson receiver, Geisley rail, Geisley trigger, Comp M4 from Aimpoint, Fax and Barrel, AAC brake, Magpul appointments. I went with the LaRue mount. LaRue mount. I mean, this, this is a rifle that, that I built for Eric from scratch using components that we chose. But... I mean, a regular AR-15, just as a baseline gun, start with it, 600 bucks. Magazines are plentiful. Ammunition yep. is plentiful and inexpensive. I mean, you can buy a case of, uh, of steel-cased 5.56 five, and just go out to the range and plink. It's not going to hurt your gun. Save your good ammo for home defense, self-defense, sure. life and liberty, whatever the case is. Learn how to use this platform, and you can move on from a 5.56 five, on up to maybe an auto-loading 308 or something like that down the road. Or you might want to get multiple ARs set up in different calibers. That's sure. the thing. There's so many options. And, and that's one of those things that someone is going to try to probably come into. Like As time goes on, they may eventually go, hey, I've got one AR set up the way I like it or the way I think I like it, and I'm going to go with something else. Yep. Guys, the AR is impossible to beat. Oh, God. Yeah. I mean, they are a great gun, and if you're looking at it from that standpoint, let's say you're, you know, you're watching this video you're probably new to guns or you're you know solidifying information you've heard somewhere else mm -hmm. we find that with these YouTube videos a lot of people will do that some of the people that watch these videos they've already decided on what they want to do they just want and, to and they want to reinforce something yeah. that they've already learned or made their mind up on and they want to they want to be given almost uh, seemingly a, a a reason to think otherwise yeah. and that's fine if you're watching it for that reason great uh, this experience that we've gleaned off of these guns has really came from just years of experience, not only in the retail environment, but as a consumer. Um, you know, we all started somewhere. I mean, I, I'm a collector now. I have quite a few guns, and I, I, I enjoy military surplus. Now, one thing that, you know, I want to put forth in this video is my fifth pick, all right? We've got a Mosin here. Now, some of you guys are going to get to the point. You're going to get to the point where you've got, you know, a nice 22, you got your handgun or two, maybe a shotgun, an AR. Maybe you've uh, stepped up and bought you one of those evil AKs or something. <laughs> you know, those those horrible baby killing rifles. But, you know, let's just say you've gotten yourself a, a nice collection of life and liberty guns and you want to get into kind of the, let's just say the finer things in, in the gun collecting world. Let's just say, you know, are you going to go out and uh, and get in a fight with somebody or do something with a, with a Mosin? Well, probably, probably not. not. Uh, may, this fifth slot can be taken a lot of different ways. The thing that that's nice about the Mosin this is a uh, this is a World War II surplus Russian infantry rifle. Uh, it's a 9130. Okay, 1891 modified in 1930s, where it gets its model designation. Fires a 7.62 by 54 rimmed cartridge. It has a lot of history to it. These were used in a lot of influential battles in World War II. Uh, many of these are veterans. Uh, a lot of these surplus guns you can find were used in the war, uh, although refinished and and refurbished, yeah, but they, they were used in the war, so they have that historical significance to them. Some people want a gun that is collectible fun to shoot, and it's an interesting kind of talking point with people. So that's where this rifle will kind of well, fall into place. Plus, ammunition is still relatively inexpensive. It's not as cheap as it used to be. Yep. Um, but you can find crates of 440 rounds still for about 120 130 bucks, which is pretty good for like a 30 caliber style firearm. Yep. Ammo is still reasonable. Yep. These guns, even at the time this video is being made, can still be had for around $200 or so. The yep. prices have gone up over the years, but you're still not going to find a center fire, full power rifle for less money than there's, you will a Mosin. There's no way you can arm a number of people with a large yep. caliber Bolt action rifle yep. for less money. I mean, well, you can also hunt with this if you want. Sure you can put can. a 200 grain bullet in it. You can hunt deer. So this kind of fills the hey, I want to collect maybe some military guns, or hey, I want to go have a rifle to go kill some deer with or something. Yeah. Guys, you can put a slug in your shotgun and go kill a deer with it if you that, want. That that reminds me though, there is a lot of uh, commercially available ammunition out there on the market from uh, not only um, companies overseas that import into the states here, but sure. also um, domestic brands too that yeah. make 54R soft points, honey ammo, sure. that sort of thing. I mean, 
And you can also, guns. if you want, let's say you don't care about military guns, you can substitute this rifle for a good high quality gun like maybe a Savage Model 10 or a Model 11 Scout or you can go with like maybe one of the Ruger Americans. Yeah, this is a new Savage I just got actually. <laughs> it's still got the tags on it. It still has the tags on it. <laughs> but I mean, these, something like that. Yeah, this is just a, a it's kind of like a seventh wild card, but that's yeah, okay. You know, these are less than 700 bucks. Absolutely. On the retail side of things. I mean, yep. obviously it doesn't come with an optic or rings or anything, but you can get a high-quality 308 bolt-action rifle if you don't want to go the surplus route sure. for very little money. I so mean, let's move this. Yeah, I mean, Remington has a lot of good good options as well, but so does Savage. You know, oh, yeah. I mean, their, their, their 10 models are great, and they're inexpensive, and they're a good starting platform. You can always upgrade the stocks. I mean, just like we were talking about aftermarket components with the 1022 sure. and the AR, bolt-action rifles, Oh God! For the Savages and Remington 700s, there are so many aftermarket parts and accessories, yep. stocks, everything for those guns. Well, I think that uh, in light of this video, maybe you guys will glean some information. If you're new to guns, if you're new to gun buying, this this kind of is a culmination of different experience that we've taken, uh, you know, over over the years. And we hope that you'll find this information, you know, uh, useful to you. Maybe you'll invest in the right gun the first time and not have to learn the mistakes a hard way like we did. Uh, we're not saying these are the bees knees are the best things since sliced bread. They are the most common, and many of these guns are rugged and popular for a reason. Well, I mean, like Glocks are rugged, Remington 870s are rugged gun, and also these firearms on the table are representative of a larger category. I mean, the AR that we show here is representative of the category for AR-15s, the 1022, the Glock, this this Remington 870 here. They're representative of yep. a particular category of firearms which we're trying to, to get out there. Bottom so, line, guys, you buy the guns that are on this table and you will be set really well for a wide variety of different situations. Oh, yeah. You'll buy a great gun right out the gate the first time and I promise you'll be happy with anything that you see on this table. No doubt about it. So, uh, guys, we really want to take a moment to thank you for watching today's video. Uh, you know, we, we put a lot of thought into these Five Guns videos. Um, this one was, was a little harder. It's, it was actually a pretty easy concept, but it was a little harder than you might think. It is. It so, is. Uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something. Take a moment to uh, subscribe to our channel for more of this type of stuff. Take a minute to like our video. Uh, make sure you go and like us on Facebook. Follow us on Facebook. Um, thanks for watching. We have many more videos like this that we do. Uh, this is a Five Guns video. Many of the other videos we do are one called Gun Gripes. It's kind of a little series that we do where we, you know, complain about things that are happening in the gun industry. We gripe about everything. And then uh, we have a, a, a series uh, called Firearms Facts, and we break down certain facts about guns. It's really fun for beginners and experienced shooters yeah. alike. Uh, we have a series called Meltdown where we go through and we melt down guns. We shoot them full auto until they fail just to see how much abuse they can take. Gun we reviews, do, accessory reviews. Yeah, all yeah. kinds of stuff, guys. So uh, if you're a gun person and you want to be more well-rounded as a gun owner, you're in the right place. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, thank you so much for watching today's video. We'll be back with more. See you next time. Take care.